So why might that have helped? Minus negative b, or minus negative a, minus negative a. Yeah, that's a big common mistake to have happen. Um, the equation, the, the formula you can see, it's right over there, we can flip back to it here. It's supposed to be negative b. A lot of times, what happens is just this always winds up being negative, like the ultimate uh, <coughs> value of this number for a lot of students, is, it's just always negative. If you have a positive b, you put it in there, you make it negative, and if it's already negative, you don't bother to change it into a positive. All right, so b is negative 8, so negative b would be negative, negative 8, or positive 8. So this should be a positive 8. And technically, this should be a negative 8 squared. It doesn't really matter. You can't mess that up, right? Square 8 or square negative 8 is always going to be positive. But if we're being technical here, it's not correct. Uh, you got the blue arrow here, going from here to there. Uh, and it's definitely blue for the blue arrow. What has Blaine done? You see it from the beginning to the end of the arrow. Why don't you write that down? What he did? Yeah. Uh -huh. Divided by four. The thing that's important that I want you to see is uh, if Blaine did this correctly, <coughs> even though what he should have had was a positive eight, but, you know, it's a, it a small mistake. Uh, he divided by four in every term that you see. Um, and also, he didn't try to do it back here, where the you know there was a number inside the square root. Okay. So we first, if we're going to simplify, we cannot simplify this eight with just the square root of forty-eight. We need to actually find numbers like square roots of numbers, because the square root of forty-eight is not forty-eight; it's some other number, and that other number might not be divisible by two or whatever. And actually, 48 doesn't even have a square root that's nice. It's, it's going to be a decimal. So the best we can do is to simplify it if we don't want to be living on a decimal. Crazy forever decimal. So first, we've got to simplify the square root. And then we have to, we have to uh, divide 4 out of everything. Right, another common mistake is to cancel out the 4 from just these two, just the 8 and the 8. So just to cancel this 8 with this 8 completely. Um, be careful about it. If you're going to cancel out a 4 or whatever factor it is to be with every single term in this Dividing each of them by 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2, 8 divided by 4 is 2, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 1 times the square root of 3. Next we have Renee. Uh, Renee forgets to do one very important thing at just the very beginning. members, you guys. 
Is that her name? Yes, you. Yes. Add three x to both sides. Why? So you get zero on one side. We see this uh, quadratic formula. We get so used to using it, we forget that it only applies. Like there's a condition to it. It only applies for ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. It's got to be equal to zero. similar except we're going to add 3x both sides so we'll have 10x minus 5 which is 12x squared. Um, also notice this, a, a really common mistake uh, in these problems. Even if you add 3x, if you add 3x and you get 10x, they still let this be a and this be b and this be c because you're just used to a is first, b is second, c is last. Okay? That's not the case. That can't be the case. And I can get different answers just by rearranging the terms of the quadratic formula, of the quadratic equation. So how do I know A is A? Well, it's multiplied by the x squared. Okay, how do I know B is B? Multiplied by x to the first power, and C is the constant. Okay, so that's one thing we should notice. A is 12, B is 7, if we forget about this, if we forget about this mistake of not adding B should really be 10 when you add 3x both sides. Anyway, C is negative 5. If we just kind of ignore that mistake and just let's say that we uh, follow this work all the way through. So ignoring for our initial mistake, how does Renee get the two solutions circled in purple? Let's just wait for a second. Think about that. If you know, Questions at all confusing to you? Uh, let me just clarify before we talk about it together. We're here at this step, and then all of a sudden we have these two different solutions. And that's the question. How do we get from there to the purple circle head? So how is that? How do we do that? That's what she did. She understands plus minus doesn't mean in a number that's positive and negative. It means you get there's two numbers. You add 17 and you subtract 17. Okay. She just does that out. Negative 7 plus 17 is going to be 10. Divide by 24. 5 over 12. If we simplify, negative 7 minus 17 is negative 24. Divide by 24, you get negative 1. Those are the incorrect solutions, of course. Um, but the idea still holds. You're going to do plus or minus at the end there. We just put that as our answer. Plus or minus 17. Um, so the way that I put it to you is different from what the book says because we use some vocab that we didn't quite cover, all right? But uh, that vocab is discriminant. The instruction that I gave you was just find just the number that's in the square root. Because in, in, when you use the quadratic formula, you always have that square root part. That square root part, the stuff in the square root is called the discriminant. All right. So and I said to uh, to find the number that's in the square root, the discriminant, and use it to decide how many and what kind of solutions you're going to get. So. Um, Jaden here, you can check his work.
plugged in the values of a, b, and c correctly into the square root. So he's found the discriminant is zero, but he decides there's no solution. Jaden's work is correct, but what is incorrect about his conclusion? And he's supposed to write down what, you know, what how would your answer differ? What was wrong about his conclusion? you get the answer and the response to that. So there's no solution. So what do you think would happen if you got a zero in the square root? Does that mean you had no solution? Oh, what do you mean? Um, so it just means that the discriminant is zero. That it would like add or subtract 8x to get the solution. You would add or subtract 8x? You got the other pieces. Mm -hmm. So you're saying what? Well, that there is a solution, but we're not we're trying to find the discriminant. Okay. So, but what is this discriminant that is zero? What does it tell us about what kinds of solutions or how many solutions we'll find? Two. Two solutions. I want you to keep in mind the the, the quadratic formula, what it looks like. Right? If we go back here, how do we find those two solutions? Doing the adding and subtracting of 17, right? Taking negative 7 plus 17 and negative 7 minus 17 gives us these different solutions, okay? And that came from the square root. It came from the discriminant. And this one, that discriminant part is a zero, so that thing that you're plusing and minusing is a zero. How many solutions is that going to cause you to get? One. Just one. We're going to add zero. Nothing's going to change about the numerator. We're going to subtract zero. Nothing's going to change. So it's one solution. Okay, so the, the, the idea of using this thing called the discriminant to decide how many, uh, like what kinds of solutions you get and how many you get uh, is one that we didn't quite get to, but one that if you saw the word discriminant and you looked back in the section to find what discriminant was, <coughs> Um, so you saw how we used zero, the fact that it was zero, to say well, we're going to be adding and subtracting nothing from the numerator. Uh, and that's going to give us one solution. So why do you think the number inside the square root is called the discriminant? You write that down. Just, uh, why is it called the discriminant? Think about the word discriminant. Other words that it sounds like. discriminant word. What does, uh, what do you think the root word of discriminant is? It sounds really close to it. Does it sound like any other word you've ever heard? Discriminate? Yeah. Okay. What does it mean to discriminate? 
discriminate? So it does have a, a connotation. When you say we discriminate, yeah, that's kind of what it means. It kind of means to to draw divisions among different kinds of things, or kinds of people, or that kind of thing. So definitely, if you say you discriminate in the everyday life, it sounds bad. So we use it. Right. The discriminant is this thing that makes the difference between, or makes the decision between what kinds of solutions we have and how many solutions we're gonna have, okay? So if you think about that discriminant, the good, different kinds of values you can have and how, it, uh, how its value changes the kinds of solutions we get, real ones, imaginary ones, two of them, one of them, uh, that, that is the, the element that decides, that discriminates. Correct discriminant and uh, balance and came. Let's just say came to the correct conclusion. So, for one, how does Janice know the solution will be imaginary? If we just go ahead and raise our hand. The discriminant is negative. Discriminant being the number that's in the square root. It's a negative. Square root of a negative. Always. How does Janice know that there will be two solutions? Because, yeah, the square root is getting uh, inside the formula, as part of the formula, it has a plus minus in front of it. You would add it, you would subtract it to that other number in the numerator and divide by the denominator, and you would have two different solutions. Questions from the homework? You guys felt good about using a quadratic formula? As far as we're going to go in this chapter, we're not going to do four, nine or four ten. Um, so today we have just a review day, but I'm going to have a review packet. A whole weekend. Get all ready for this thing. All right. Um, so yeah, any any other questions? How did we? If we could generally say how we came up with the quadratic formula, how did we come about that? We notice this is a pattern among all quadratic formulas, or quadratic equations that we're solving. And so we just use that pattern. What like method did we use? What's that? Solve, solve the problem. To, yeah, to get x by itself, when we start with a squared, ax squared plus bx equals, no, 
AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Like what method do we use? I just wrote with A, B, C as the function. No, I mean, remember when we derived the formula? We started with AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. And then we, we subtracted C from both sides. We divided by A and we did all these things. What that method was called? Completing the square. Completing the square is this thing. That's where the pattern came from. We took any quadratic formula, a quadratic equation, they are different, quadratic equation, and we solved it the same way. Like every time we would divide out that thing that was in front of x squared and then we would get rid of that constant that was given to us, we'd come, come up with the, the constant that gets the perfect square trinomial or perfect square. It is the same every time we do the completing the square. So that is a result of doing completing the square on essentially every quadratic equation there could ever be with absolutely any coefficients that you could imagine. There it is. All the work being done for completing the square to every possible combination of A, B, or C. Okay. There's no questions. We'll pass the homework. I'll give you out the, uh, the recap here.